Welcome back. I am currently at the Marine Supply Store. They have everything that you need so that you can be ready to go and fish uh, as a deckhand on a gill netter, on a saner, anything you're trying to do. If you're even working in the processing plant and you want some things for yourself, they have everything you need here. I'm gonna tell you what you need. Stick around till the end of the video, give you one great financial tip, save you a bunch of money that I did not save. I'm here at the Marine Supply Store in Cordova. It's called LFS. They have a fantastic selection of everything that you need. I uh, came here to get a couple things for myself. So while I'm here, I wanna show you what you're gonna wanna be outfitted with and give you a couple of tips to maybe save a little bit money. I'm gonna show you a couple of the basic staples you're gonna need and a couple of things you're gonna want while you're out on that boat. All right, so we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way to the top of the body with all the gear you're gonna want on your person. So, first thing, you're gonna want some waterproof boots. Shoes. Shoes. And this brand, Extra Tough, is kind of the name brand that everyone uses around here. When you walk around, you're gonna see people in Extra Tough boots pretty much all the time, anywhere you go. I've got. I got mine on right here. They're incredibly comfortable once you break them in. I've taken them hiking. I wear them on the boat all the time. I wear them in town all the time. You can wear them to the bar. Everyone wears them. So anywhere that you go, extra tufts are a good piece you can wear with whatever it is you're wearing. And they're waterproof. They're entirely waterproof. They're completely rubber. The inside you can see, see on mine, I've got mine rolled down so that they can dry a little bit. The inside is a bit of this softer material uh, and it wicks a bit, but of course it's rubber, so no water is going to be coming out. When you're wearing extra tufts, make sure you have a lot of dry socks ready. Change your socks every day. Socks, try and keep your feet dry. When we're out humping, I want you boys to remember to change your socks whenever we stop. I use talcum powder as well to kind of like freshen up the boots, freshen up my socks if I'm not getting the chance to, you know, get laundry done. You're gonna need a pair of waterproof boots, especially ones that are uh, like slip resistant. These things, they, they don't slip much even when it's in water. I originally bought a pair of Timberlands and they're not suitable for being on a boat. You're gonna want actual rubber boots. Moving up, you're gonna want a bib. No, God, please, no, no! A bib is pretty much rain pants that pull up over your chest. Uh, we can look at this little logo here. That's what they're gonna look like on you. Some things to consider is the weight of it and the color. You always wanna choose bright colors. I chose a jacket and a bib that are bright colors so that if you go overboard, someone can see you. You may not be heard, but if you're seen, that could be the difference between a fatal accident or uh, just a story that you tell at the bar later. Second thing, they come in different uh, thicknesses. There's lightweight, heavyweight, and midweight. I go with the heavyweight, especially being on a saner right now, because you're constantly getting wet. There's water, there's rain, there's jellyfish, always coming down on your head. So I prefer the thicker rain gear when it comes to that you might be able to get away with a midweight or a lightweight. And it's especially good in the summer because you're sweating. <laughs> you're working and you're sweating. So you're gonna want something that breathes a little bit. So that's kind of a matter of preference. Something else to keep in mind is, you know, everyone, <laughs> everyone seems to wear orange. So if you wanna fit in, go get some orange bib. But I marked mine in the back so that I know which one's mine. Uh, that's the bib. And most people will go with the heavyweight bib as well. I want to mention that. Next up, we've got jackets. I've got two here to show you. And I want to talk to you a little bit about why I would use both. But right now we've got a lightweight Grundens top. And we've got a, uh, a North jacket that's a bit heavier. This is going to be a style that you see often, as well as this. 
Again, the lightweight jackets are going to be breathable. This is not going to breathe, but it's going to keep all the water out. I've run into trouble with this jacket specifically on a gill netter. It has to do with these buttons. If you're on a gill netter, this is going to snag on the, on the net, and that could put a small hole in the net. It could pull you away from the reel, and it could just really make a hassle for your day. But if you're on a saner, I've been using this lately, and I'm just getting constantly wet. So having the heavyweight top is good. Again, hot days, this thing is going to be hot. Pretty much everywhere, it's going to be hot. Shout out. Man, I don't need a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Arthur. Next up, you got gloves. These are going to be mandatory all the time. And you're going to want to keep these dry on the inside, too. They should be totally waterproof, completely rubber, like your shoes, but they're going to be... The inside is, you know, still got kind of that similar wicking material like the extra toughs do. Yeah, the gloves you kind of got to play around with to find your right size and uh, however you want to layer them. Get yourself a good pair of gloves. Now, all of that is going to be things you can't do without. This other stuff I want to show you is stuff that I prefer to have and I would highly recommend using. First up. Wow. Probably the most important thing I want to have with me for safety, at least, is a, is a knife, especially with a sheath. This knife that I have, it's serrated, and it's also got a blade to it. That's going to be important for cutting, cutting lines, cutting tape, cutting most anything. What I'll do is I'm going to take this knife, and I'm going to put it about, like, on, on the shoulder straps, uh, facing down. So, let's see if we can turn this around. So, I'm gonna have this knife, so it's facing down, just like this. And so if I need it, I can just push down on the knife, and it'll be taped to my bib. So I can just take it straight out, put it straight back in, and then that'll stay there. Honestly, the safety bit is the most important thing, I think. Because if you get tangled up in a net or a rope or something and you go overboard, you need to get out. And at that point... Cut the rope! No, I won't do it! Stop Just it. cut the rope! I can't! Stop cut the rope! <laughs> You've got to stay breathing and above water. And if that gear's going down, you're going down with it. Having this knife on you is going to be something that could keep you alive or help keep a friend alive. You find a use for it when you do, but a blade, always good to have. Next up, we have these wristers. So the way these work is these go around your wrist on top of your rain gear. So your rain gear is layered underneath there, not like I have it now. I don't have my rain gear on. Especially working on a saner, your hands are going to be above your head pretty often. And so water is going to want to run down your sleeve. Your elbow gets wet. Your whole arm gets wet. It's really a miserable time. What these are going to do is they're going to keep the water from getting stuck all the way up your sleeve and you can have dry arms the whole day. <laughs> it's great. So, wristers, totally recommend them. They're not very expensive. I'd go for it. Last two bits, a bit on uh, footwear. I've got a pair of felt insoles. If you're on your feet all day, extra toughs, they're incredibly comfortable, but being on your feet... Uh, maybe it'd be worth some felt insoles. What I would do before buying these is just wear the wear the extra tufts around for a while, uh, see how they feel, go a couple of days of work or uh, a week or two gill netting or seining, and see how they feel. If you need them, throw them in, but it's going to be taking up space in your boot, so keep that in mind. But these are going to be so good. These Bama socks. I've heard the best things about, I'm going to be trying them for the first time, but they've been highly recommended to me. They are waterproof booties. So, in your waterproof shoes, you're sweating and no water is coming out. Your feet are going to smell like hell. <laughs> Mine have been doing that for a while. My skipper almost kicked me off the boat for it when I was gill netting. Wasn't great. But, these BMS socks do is they keep your feet dry 
and insulated while they're in your boot. So you're gonna stay warm, gonna stay dry, the sweat is gonna be whipped away from your sock, and so the Bama is gonna you know, soak up all your sweat and just keep it locked away. Your socks can stay dry and keep you insulated and nice and cozy. So I'm really excited for these. And that is about all the gear I think I can recommend to you here. Uh, there's of course gonna be more things you might find out that you want, but between all of this, you should be pretty much outfitted. I'm gonna leave you off with one last financial tip before you go out and buy your things. I bought a lot of my gear when I was over in Anchorage. I paid a good high price for it because it was quality gear and I figured I'm gonna be using this every day. I wanna make sure my gear is quality. The cost makes sense. I'm gonna go with it. But I'm here in the Marine Supply now and looking at some of the gear, I remember when I bought my bib, it was $150 for the Grundon Hercules bib. But I come here and found these bibs and they are about uh, $120. So saving $30 on a big purchase like that helps a lot. There's also a much wider selection. Uh, these are all just bibs. And when I was in Anchorage, they had only a couple of bibs and I was at the Army Overstock store. Uh, can't remember the name of it, it's by the pier. If you're passing through Anchorage, you might find your way there if you're looking for gear. But, long story short, you go to the marine supply store, wherever it is your fishery is, wherever it is you're trying to get your job, the prices are gonna be lower. <laughs> so, go and get your stuff there. Another tip, if you don't have the money to buy your gear, then you can wait on it. You can go and try and find a job before you have the gear that you need. A lot of skippers, a lot of captains are going to buy the gear you need for you. They're doing that sometimes out of their pocket, and sometimes it'll just be a, a cash advance, something that they'll take out of your paycheck at the end of the season. That might help a lot. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money when I was coming here, so that was an option I could have used, but I decided not to. The reason I decided to buy my gear before I went out was because I wanted them to see that I was ready to work, I could start work that day, didn't need anything else, And that helped me with getting a job. Weigh your financial situation. If you don't have the money to buy your gear, don't do it. Feed yourself, make sure you're taken care of. But if you do have the money to buy your gear, buy it ahead of time, wear it while you're walking the docks, let them see that you have everything you need, at least your bib. If it's raining, have everything. If it's not raining, you can wear your bib, that's fine. Uh, that's all you're gonna need. And that's all I got for you today, YouTube. If you thought this video was helpful, if you enjoyed it, uh, or if you have a friend that you think is gonna like it, share it, like it, subscribe, do all that wonderful stuff, and go out there and find some work. Until next time, YouTube, peace.